Bienvenidos al Día de los Muertos. Welcome to the celebration, celebration of the Day of the Dead at the Hudson Museum. This is a happy tradition at the museum, and very, we're very happy to deliver that to you uh, through online um, celebration. Today we're going to be learning about how the celebration started uh, in Mexico, because this is a, a celebration that has been happening for many years. And we're going to be learning about the traditions, how it was blended from the indigenous origins to the mix with the, um, the Spaniards when they came to, the, to Mexico and the Americas. OK, so today, or in these days, many of you are celebrating or getting prepared to go trick or treating, right? You might be very busy going to the Walmart or some other stores to grab chocolate, candies, decorations, getting fancy costumes, and they're trick or treating it at home, right? Many of you have been doing that for many years here in the United States. Well, in Mexico, people are also very busy, especially at the markets. Today, around end of October, beginning of November, all the markets are full of beautiful things for people to buy. So El Dia de los Muertos is a tradition of life. It's a tradition for being celebrating uh, people that we remember that had passed pass away. In the Dia de los Muertos, in this special occasion, it brings people together and it has involving many things, from people going to the markets and get ready with all the goodies as Halloween, for example, here. But it's a different meaning. People will go into the markets through buying pan de muerto, which is especially for these days around November. If you go to Mexico, you will never find it in another day. Just for end of October, mid of November, you will also go to the markets to buy flores de cempasuchel, which is going to be very popular around the cemeteries and the altars at home. You will also go and buy at the other marketplaces and buy uh, sugar skulls and candies, because are going to be another treats that you will see in many of the offerings for these special days. So while we are having similar uh, things in the United States and in Mexico, the celebrations are very different. For, let, me, let me tell you how it started. So Dia de los Muertos means the day of the dead. And it started many, many years ago, actually many centuries ago, when the Aztecs inhibited uh, Mexico in parts of Central America. And then we had the Mayas, the Aztecs, the Toltecas, which all is a lot of indigenous uh, regions right there. These people believe in the life that life was actually, we were living in a dream, actually. And life came after we pass away. Okay? So they believe in an afterlife. For instance, they had, I will say, um, all of, they have a different places. For instance, they have a, a place that is called Mictlán. And Mictlán is like a heaven for the, for the Aztecs. Okay? They have a, a place somewhere where they believe all the souls were going, or were living, actually. And here at, in Earth, we were living just a dream. Okay? And so when people pass away, they put them in, an, in kind of a fetal position, because they will be re, um, reborn in a new life. Okay? And then, so they have different things. I mean, they have uh, many gods, as you might remember. They have a god for the rain which is called Tlaloc. They have a god for the war, which supposedly they have goddess. And one of the goddess was the goddess of the god, or all the gods. Um, her name was Cuatliwe, uh, or Mictlicue, or something like that, which is a, is a god that uh, they have it for, that were representing the living and the dead, also the fertility. And this goddess had a, a pyramid with the skulls. All around the pyramid was decorated with the skulls. Okay. And she was very important for the Aztecs because 
One day the Aztecs were asking the goddess, could you send us um, a sign about afterlife? And the goddess sent them the marigolds. So the marigolds were part of their uh, growing uh, plants, especially to get the offerings for the, for the dead. So the, the flor de sempasuchel is the flower that the goddess gave them as a sign. And it grows about this end of the summer, uh, mid-August, uh, and then that's what the, the Aztecs celebrated um, or honored the people that they believed they were becoming to Earth. They prepared for them altars. They prepared them offerings, okay? Offerings with the elements that represent the four elements, such water, and it was another element with papel picado, which will be representing the wind. They will have some also um, incense that will represent the fire, and the fruit, and some other uh, foods that will be representing the elements of Earth. So they have these different kind of meanings to remember the people who pass away. And then they have this avenue that is called La Avenida de los Muertos in Teotihuacan, which is, it was a um, site, an archeological site with a lot of pyramids, but they have a very big street, an avenue that they call La Avenida de los Muertos. It was a street where they, from all the summer through, no, through October, through, from the summer through August, they were having all these offerings because they were thinking, oh, the dead are coming. Um, to earth to hang out with the living. Okay, so they had all these celebrations and, and the aroma of the flowers, and um, it was pretty amazing. But then one day, the Spaniards came to Mexico. It came Hernán Cortés, and then they started to bring also uh, another religion, the uh, Catholicism. And when they arrived here, they say, wait a minute. Uh, we also have a day to celebrate the dead. It's on November 1st and November 2nd. So on November 1st, the Catholic uh, represents or celebrates actually or remembers the, the souls of the saints and the souls of the little ones, the kids, the spirits of the kids. And also in November 2nd, they will be remembering the souls of the adults or the rest of the souls that has passed away. People in um, Spain and other Catholic countries, they just go to the cemeteries, clean their graves, and usually have a mass for them. But in Mexico, when they came, it was so difficult to erase all those years of traditions that they've been doing with the altars, the food. Uh, they also believe that they have uh, the afterlife. Both of them had that in common. Uh, the Aztecs and the Spaniards believe in the same thing. So what happened is that it has a blend. Um, it was a mix of the cultures. But now, instead of just be going to the cemeteries, they're going to have a little more elements. It's going to be a very particular way to celebrate uh, or honoring, actually, the people who have passed away. If you go to Mexico in these days, you will see about around this time of the year, all the cemeteries very colorful. People will go to the graves and they will clean them. About October 30, 31, they will clean the graves and watch everything very well. They will go to the market, as I mentioned to you before, to get a lot of sempasuchel flowers. They will decorate their graves with the flowers. Sometimes people will put some food around the graves and they will put the flowers, candles, because the candles will represent the light for, uh, for the souls to come. It will uh, illuminate the road. They will put uh, incense of copal, and the copal will be for, uh, the, for the air to be purified and clean. Uh, they will be also placing some their uh, foods and fruits because they want to please the people who, the spirits that are coming, that were very important in their lives. And then they also will have music, and then they also will have some happy times. Some people will stay the entire night 
in the graves, in the cemeteries. And it's beautiful because you can see all the cemetery filled with the lights, candle lights. And then they will have like a vigil where they're praying, but they're also singing and they're telling stories about the spirit. They're waiting for the spirits to come. In the towns that are very uh, really small villages or the small towns in the countryside, people will place petals of the marigolds or other flowers from the grave through all the pathway to their home. And that will be a sign for the spirits just to come and then look and follow the pattern, I mean the pathway to arrive home. And so they cannot get lost because sometimes they feel like, a, oh, the architecture has been changed. Uh, their houses that might be looking different. So they don't want actually the souls to get lost while arriving from their uh, world to the, to the visit that they're having. And then at home on October 31, in the afternoon, the kids, instead of going trick-or-treating, they're preparing the altar, an altar for the kids and for the saints. So at home, they will be setting this kind of a table, okay? And then the, the family will be putting some pictures of the persons who pass away that were kids. For instance, uh, we're, we are honoring in this altar all the victims of the COVID, there have been mi uh, millions of people who had died. Between them, we're going to be honoring the kids on November 1st, that has been the victims, and also all the souls who had died, that ch ch the children. And then on November 2nd, it's going to be the honoring for the, for the adults. But the setting of the altars will be different. Setting an altar is like a, a Christmas tree. There is no going to be a similar altar in the houses. But the elements, they have some basic elements that are uh, interesting and then that, that are unique. And then they decorate with the rest, personalizing based on the uh, below ones that they are remembering. So for the kids, while they're setting the altar, they might have some toys because they're remembering the altars, uh, uh, the kids. They will put a picture of the, uh, of the little ones. Then we're going to be probably placing their favorite toy, okay, or their favorite outfit. If they play football, they might have a football right there. If they have a favorite doll, they might have a, a doll or their favorite story. Um, they might have, for the kids, a hot chocolate that will be accompany the pan de muerto or popcorn or whatever the kids used to like when he was or she was uh, living. And then on November uh, 1st, at, at 6 o'clock, remember, they prepare everything the day before November 1st. November 1st, they're going to have the celebrations. They're going to be praying, telling some stories. And then by November 1st, about 6 o'clock, the souls of the kids, uh, they say that they're, they're, they're coming back. They're returning to Mictlan or to, the, to heaven. And then they will be redecorating the altar and put the elements for the grown-ups. All the altars will have the papel picado, as I mentioned to you, that represents the wind. It has to be very colorful because each color has a, a meaning too. They're going to have an image also, a image like a the Lady or Guadalupe, which is the patron of Mexico. They're going to have the candles. They're going to have the las calaveritas de azúcar. And in the Calaveritas de Azúcar, it will have, they will be writing the names of the person that they're remembering. They're going to have a picture of the person that they're honoring in that altar. And because they are adults, they're going to have their favorite drinks. So you might see a bottle of tequila in the altar. You might see a glasses if the person was wearing glasses. You might see their favorite foods, like a mole and a rose. I remember. My grandmother, they used to prepare the altar for the, for the family who passed away, and then in her table was a feast. They prepared mole, she prepared uh, a lot of uh, wonderful food, very aromatic. Uh, and it's not, it's not a, any kind of food. 
they prepare food like a feast. You wanted to please the, your uh, beloved ones because it's a special visit that they're making. They will have the picture of the, of the uh, relative that are adults. Everything is set up perfectly, okay? People will be praying, okay? But nobody is allowed to touch the food in the altar because that's a treat for the souls. And I was, I was used to tell my grandmother, but well, grandma, this is looking so good and it smells so good. I'm hungry, I want to try the food. And my grandma will say, not right now. We want, it, we want to make sure that the spirits are coming and they're gonna be uh, eating the food. And I was thinking, hmm, grandma, how can they eat the food? I don't see the spirits. I don't see even how do they have mouth or the teeth, las, los dientes. No tienen estómago. ¿Cómo comen la comida? How do they eat the food? And my grandma will come and say, can you come closer? to the pan de muerto. And they say, oh, pan de muerto, my favorite. And she will say, can you get closer to your, close your eyes and then get them closer to your nose? And I will close my eyes and I will still smelling. And can she say, can you, can, by closing your eyes, can you feel the aroma? And I will say, yes, it smells so good. I want to eat it with a hot chocolate. And she will say, well, this is the way that the spirits are eating the food. They come and they're hanging around with us in the table, okay? And then they absorbing the, the aroma of every dish. They're so happy that we have prepared for them so yummy food. It's, uh, so they are pleased. Because at five o'clock or six o'clock in the afternoon, all, all the, the guests, all the spirits from the family are leaving. And once they are done with the feast, then the family will sit together uh, next to the altar. They will be praying a rosary, or they will be uh, telling some prayers for the souls of their beloved ones. And then it's gonna be story time. Family members are gathering to tell stories about the people they remember. It will be stories from the way that they remember uh, the, when they were leaving. So it's a, a beautiful experience because then you have to know the people that even you don't know when you were part of the family, but you don't, might not remember those people. Just by hearing your grandma, your uncles t telling stories. So as long as you keep remember the people in your heart, okay, they are living. Okay? So this is the, um, the beauty about this uh, beautiful celebration. It's about honoring the dead, honoring by remembering them, by trying to please them, because their beliefs, their beautiful traditions. You, you will see that we have also another part of the Day of the Dead, not only the spiritual part when we go to the uh, cemetery, when we go to mass, or when we are setting altars at home to please them, but there is also another part that involves more folkloric uh, aspect. It will be the the, the parties for the people, okay, for the people of, of the population. For instance, there are parades nowadays in many cities. There is a parade for La Catrina. La Catrina is a character. Esta es una Catrina, es una calavera, por es una Catrina. We also have Catrinas, like a this papel maché, it's also part of the Catrina. We also have Catrinas, it's a character. It's a character that was created, I think, at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. When Mexico had a, a dictator, his name was Porfirio Diaz. And Porfirio Diaz used to please only the richest people in the, in the country. And he was ignoring the poor, which was probably 90% of the population. So one of the journalists, uh, that I wa he was very... Um, well, he wanted to make aware about the, the world, about what, are the, what were the injustices in, the, in Mexico. He was, started to make this character, La Catrina, which is a very fancy lady about, with the um, dresses of that beginning of the 19th century. 
And then, but she was those kind of characters, uh, like a mariachi, and then sometimes they have characters of the revolution, was to mock what was going on in the society back then. But they cannot be afraid or they cannot be, um, they cannot say anything because it was in a humoristic way to show the reality of what's hap what was happening in Mexico back then. Um, they, they had also other part of traditions like uh, making these beautiful masks. They have some dances especially for the, for the Day of the Dead. They have other traditions that involves art, the, the, the performances. People will have parades, for instance, in Guanajuato when uh, Guadalupe Posadas was born, his town. They will pe people will be dressing up as a Katrina. They will have uh, makeup in their face, beautiful outfits, and then the hats with the flowers, and then they will be doing some parades. Everybody will be having the face painted very colorful like this, very festive, because they wanted to um, keep the traditions alive. It will be very colorful. It's not, you won't see in a parade people with the scary outfits or monsters. It will be more like a very festive, more about mocking the living, okay, mocking uh, activities of the living. There is also a contest about calaveritas, calaverita poems. And in those poems, uh, people will be emphasizing the characteristics of, of the living. For instance, politicians, if they are going to be uh, doing a poem, it will be a sarcastic version of what they're doing right now. People will not be offended because with that, it's going to be just a, a comic way to see uh, their lives or the actions that they're taking. So there are different aspects on the Day of the Day. It's growing. The Day of the Dead involves many things, like uh, having el, La Feria del Alfeñique, which is going to be a fair where artisans are making all kinds of figurines like these ones to be selling, selling them on the Day of the Dead. It will also involve people going to the market in the marketplace and bakeries having all the goodies ready for people to prepare. People spend a lot of money just to prepare this celebration um, at home, just as we spend here a lot of candy in for passing Halloween. And then uh, people will also prepare a lot of the decorations for their house, for the altars, and then having the fruit ready and the food for a feast. And then also, instead of having a, a custom for for Halloween, they will have their custom for La Catrina, so they can attend to either uh, parties or they can attend to the, um, the parades, but it's so beautiful. So I hope I have been explaining what Dia de los Muertos is in Mexico, and I hope you have the opportunity also to explore a little bit more. I invite you to check in the newspapers in Mexico, Calaveritas, the videos in YouTube about Dia de los Muertos and the, the parades, it's beautiful and it's very alive. Feliz Dia de los Muertos. Nos vemos.